Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So today's video is actually a part two. In my last video, I showed you some really sweet baby gifts that we made for a shower that I'm going to be going to. And then later in the day, I got to thinking about a card. And so I print, or well, I cut out some elements using my Cricut and I actually want to try and turn this into a shaker card. So I want to bring you along on that journey and hopefully this will turn out as good as I have it in my mind. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about the materials that we need for the card. So a couple of things. I have a basic card panel here and on this card panel, I'm going to be doing some ink blending. And I, the gender of the baby is unknown um, until the day of birth. So I thought I would just go ahead and use four colors, you know, that are nursery uh, oriented. So I have a pink and a green, yellow and a blue toned distressed ink. And we're gonna be doing something kind of like this on this back panel. And then I have several layers of an element that I cut out of uh, regular cardstock. This is all 110 pound cardstock, or this might be 80 pound, but we'll be layering these. And then we have a top layer, and this is kind of a unique layer because this is actually sticker cardstock, which will be really helpful to adhere to some acetate for our shaker window. And so my thought was that I would sandwich this in and have this on top and some shaker elements on the inside. So I'm hoping that this will come out the way I envision in my mind. So before we get into the actual card making, let me take you to design space and just show you what I have in mind for the card. Okay, so I'm in design space and the inspiration for this shaker card that I'm wanting to create is something that looks like this. Now this particular card here, I actually got in design space and I wasn't completely sold on the design. But what I did like is the layered effect and the fact that you could have your shaker elements here um, so what I did is I grabbed the top layer of this three layer card and I just pulled it out of the design and then I went down here to contour and what I did is I did hide all contours and then I wanted the circle in the middle to be cut out. Okay, so after I created this particular image, I then duplicated it until I had three versions. The next thing I did is I went into images and I found three different versions of basically what I call Hello Baby. And then I sized them so that they would touch the edge of the oval. This particular Hey Baby is one that it kind of had like a, a double oval outline around it. And so I just kind of made sure that it was centered nicely to get this little slice effect going on. So I put each of these in the middle, making sure that they were sized so that they would touch the oval. And then I welded them to the frame. Next, I put uh, them in duplicate. So I just duplicated each one of these using the duplicate button up here. And I have three of them in white and three in brown. Then when I went to cut these out, I actually cut the brown version here, these ones on the bottom, I cut those out of my sticker cardstock. And these top three, I cut, um, I guess, three layers out of just my regular white cardstock. So I have a total of four layers per card. And so that is how I made the elements that we're going to be layering today and hopefully that they come out 
to make a shaker. Okay, let's head back to our overhead camera and start placing these items together. And hopefully when we're done, we will have a sweet baby card to go with the gifts that we made in the last video. And actually, I will also link that video to this one so that you can watch that as well. So here's what I want to do. I am going to be using color on the background and then I've got a little bit of some like confetti type shaker elements that will go inside the shaker. So I'm going to be leaving everything else in white. And so what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to set aside the sticker cardstock and the vellum that will go underneath it. I've actually already cut the vellum. This panel here will be um, three and a three and three quarters by five. And so this is a little bit smaller than that and it'll go underneath, but that'll be, you can see how it'll cover the entire window there. And then for the sake of time, I went ahead and I've already punched out these um, three layers here. I've punched out the part of the cardstock that we do not want, and we will be layering those. And the sticker cardstock, that has to happen at the moment that you go to use it. So those be under there. And so here is our panel. Okay, so let's talk about ink blending. So I'm gonna be using the Tim Holtz Distressed Ink Mini Cubes. And I grabbed my swatch chart that I had made a couple of weeks back, and I will link a video for this down in as well. But I wanted a, um, you know, I'm going kind of with the mint theme, but I didn't want to do just mint. So I thought that I would um, grab in a yellow and a pink and a blue. Now, the only thing I'm gonna say is that you can see from these blues, they are really, really, really vivid and dark. So I'm gonna have to kind of tap off to the side and make sure I get a really light hand for these. Okay, but everything else came out came out pretty nice. Um, I just don't know if I want my blue that dark, so hopefully I can get it a little bit lighter. And I gave it a try before filming just so that I could get an idea of what I wanted it to look like. So I can use the glass mat, but I also, I do like to have just this is just a piece of cardboard or card stock and I just keep it here and I use it for a lot of my ink blending and I find that it's just really helpful to keep my work area neat and clean. So I am going to be thinking about this kind of like quadrants and we're going to start out with mustard seed. And I'm going to just start here in the top corner and I'm just going to, well, I'm going to take this off or you're going to hear me <laughs> jingling the whole time. And I want to go a little bit more than halfway horizontally and vertically because I really want to be able to blend. Okay, so just a little bit more than halfway. I think that looks good. That's very vivid, pretty yellow. Okay, so we'll set that aside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go with our pink color. And this is the Kitsch Flamingo. And kind of bring that in. And I wanna blend a little bit more than halfway, horizontally and vertically again. I am um, a little excited and nervous all at the same time. I am trying something new, which is the beauty of crafting, but I am really not, I wouldn't consider myself a card maker. I love to make cards but I don't know 
that I'm really all that great at it. So hopefully it'll work out the way I envision. Now you can see, I'm going to bring this up here, sorry for the shadow, but you can see I've got the yellow and the pink and they come together in the middle and they're creating that orange, um, which I know isn't a traditional nursery baby color, but I really like the blending effect. Okay, so this was the inspiration color for the whole thing. So this one is Cracked Pistachio. And to be honest, this one in my test um, panel, it did take me a little bit of time. So I think what I'm going to do now, since you get the idea, is I'm going to go ahead and I'll just put pop some music on for you and go ahead and finish blending out this panel. Okay, so here is our panel, and you can see that that salty ocean, that is a very, very, very um, juicy, deep color. And um, then we have the cracked pistachio, probably could have gone a little bit darker on that. And then we've got our pink and our yellow. And so this is very similar to now this is fresh, like I just did this, and then this is what I did earlier. And you can kind of see how the colors, you know, they continue blending and softening. So I'm hoping that here, F, when we get to um, come back to this particular element, that it is a little more uh, smoothed out, so to speak. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside for right now. and. I actually have an idea of something that I may want to try with this in a little bit, but for right now, I'm just going to set this aside and then we're going to come over here and we're going to work with these elements while we're letting those colors just rest and blend. Okay, so a couple of things. Now, this is Cricut cardstock. That is um, Smart Paper sticker cardstock. And I don't use it all the time, but I do like it. And I like it because like in a case like this, I can pull off the carrier sheet in the back and I can use basically what I want and then it's sticky on this side. So instead of having tons and tons and tons of glue, um, on my acetate window, I thought it would be nice just to you and I was going to keep it white anyway. So I thought this would be a really good reason. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pulling out these particular elements here. And let's see. We'll pull and get my might be needing this. So I'm just kind of manipulating by bending and I'm going to be pulling this up and just getting these little negative space pieces out. And I will say that the sticker cardstock is actually very easy to use. It um, It's thicker and it cuts really, really well. Um, Whereas regular cardstock, depending on the quality and the weight of your cardstock, can sometimes be, it can not cut as smoothly as we would like. But I, this stuff cuts really, really nice. And then it's already 
ready to go. It is self-adhesive. So I do like that aspect. I think I've got everything and I'm going to, I'm just going to lift off this carrier sheet. Very similar to like when I pull off a carrier sheet for um, vinyl. And then we are going to grab our acetate panel and I just want to put the acetate panel down so that, see how sticky it is? <laughs> so that it is as close to um, being, I don't wanna say centered because no one's gonna see this, you know, the edges of this, but I just wanna make sure that this piece right here is completely covered. So, Gonna just place that down like this. Okay. And so, and I do still have like a little bit of sticky around like there. So that'll be nice when I go to layer this. And then now I have I have my window for my shaker. Okay, so the next piece here, and let's see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to not, I don't want to put a whole lot because I don't want glue seeping everywhere, but I do feel like some of these bigger pieces need some glue and then I'm going to go around because basically what I'm going to do is sandwich in my vellum. Okay and this liquid glue will give me a little bit of float time. Not a whole lot but a little bit. Perfect. Okay. All right. So now I'm literally just going to kind of, I'm just going to let this hang out for a few minutes. i um, going to find my acrylic block and put that on there. Okay. So we're just going to, we're going to let this hang out up here for just a few minutes. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna layer these two elements here. And then we will adhere them to this panel there. So we want, I'm gonna go around the edge. And then I'm just going to go around the oval part. And then again, inside these elements here. Actually, I just had a thought. Um, I'm thinking, I'm trying to decide if really what I probably should do is this is two layers and it will sandwich the window. And then I really just need this middle part to be, I don't know if I need all that edging. This is a very tough decision because I don't know if I need everything. And the reason why I'm wondering that is because I'm gonna be using these particular um, foam strips to build up the side dimension. 
Okay, so here's what I think I'm going to do. I am going to actually just trim down around, just bring it in a little bit and have the smaller bit of, around with the Hello Baby. And that way I'm only really gluing, you know, here in the middle and not all over the card is what I'm thinking that I want to do. Okay, so let me do that off camera and I will be right back. Okay, so we are going to, now we're going to do just a little bit of glue on these little parts. And I don't need a lot, um, just enough to hold it in place. And mainly we're building up the dimension is really essentially what we're doing. And I think having less around the um, perimeter of the card, we are going to have the dimension with the strips of the foam, the foam strips. But I think having the, the actual dimension in the middle is probably going to be a little bit better. Okay. So now we'll just pop this down in here like so and then we'll just get all of the pieces and I really like the um, liquid glue. It allows you to kind of wiggle things around. Make sure that you get them the way you want. Okay, so I think this is going to work. I think this is going to work pretty good. So I'm going to just set this aside and let this hang out. And I want to check into something. So I don't know if I'm going to set the one that I just blended to the side because I don't want to ruin it in case an idea that I have goes south. So these distressed inks are water reactive. So I'm going to take my test panel and I'm just using a um, a little spray bottle and I'm going to put this here for just a moment and you can see how the water and the inks start to react and it's almost like it pulls the ink back out of the paper and then you just dab it off. And the more fine the mist, the more fine the pattern, the more blotchy the mist, the more blotchy the pattern. And, you know, I definitely don't want something blotchy like this in particular, but I'm just wondering if if I used a super fine mist, if that would be cool looking or if it would just be like too much. See, see how it, it just, it adds like a little bit of extra dimension in there. Okay, so um, let me grab my really nice mister bottle. The one that I just used a second ago is not my normal Mr. Bottle. Let me grab that and let's try this experiment on the actual panel and hopefully it will go really well. Okay, so the bottle that, that I used for this one is, this is my husband's plant bottle. Like he uses it to mist his plants. And you know, I got some really big globby things what I really want to do is use this. Now this is like those hairdresser ones. It's a very fine mist 
And so I have this for my crafts and I want to try it on our card panel that we blended a little bit ago and see if we get a different result. And hopefully it looks good and we don't have to start all over. So let's give this a try. So I'm just using a little bit. See how the mist is so much finer? And I really, let's see, did we get enough here on the bottom? It's such a super fine mist. So we'll just stab this off and see what we can see here. I definitely, like I already like this better than that. I mean, not that this is bad. It would be great for another kind of card, so I'll probably save it, but for a you know, one where I just need a little bit more on that side. So let's see, let me do it off to the side. And I just kind of sprayed the air and then I kind of pulled the card into the mist. And I think the issue is just the lighting because I can see it here with the yellow. Let me give that a second to react a little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely, it's reacting. A, yeah, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, that's just awesome. Okay. So the bigger the water droplets and the longer you let everything sit, the bigger the reaction you get. So I'm just really wanting something very subtle in the background. Okay. So I don't know if you can see, see how it, it looks speckly. I don't really like the big globby parts, but I think once we put this over it, like this, yep, look at that. There's just a little bit of extra going on in there and I really like it. Perfect. I think what I wanna do is let this sit for a minute I wanna make sure that this is really dry. Now, you could do your, the heat tool. I do have a heat tool and I could absolutely, this is, I could absolutely, there we go. Basically, I don't want the paper to be warping. It's, the only thing that I don't want to have happen. Okay, so I'll just let that sit for a second. Okay, now let's talk about shaker elements. Um, so I have these little sequins. These are my favorite. And um, these I got from some confetti. Uh, these are like a iridescent sequin from um, Simon Says Stamp. And I forget what the name of the brand is. And then I have something that looks like this. This may or may not really work, but it's not bad. It is fun, very party-ish. And then I have some stars. I don't think I'm gonna use the stars. And, oh, I do, I think I have one more thing. Hold on one more time. I forgot that I have this. This is just super chunky glitter. And it is in our baby tones. Winner, winner, winner. And then this makes me think of candy. So we'll set that aside. But. 
forgot I had this over off in my in a drawer. This is perfect. Don't you think? Don't you think this is I mean just look at that. That's like it's like I knew I was gonna be making this card months ago when I when I purchased this. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I am going to use my anti-static bag and I don't basically I want to just kind of put a little bit on this vellum because I don't want this to just stick to the vellum or the acetate and so I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-static on there and then we're going to build up our shaker walls. And these are shaker strips. These are by Gina K Designs. And they are double-sided adhesive foam strips that are already pre-cut. And um, what I like about them is that the sides are not sticky. So if I put if I put this down around here, um, the sides are not sticky, so that's a good thing. Which means my um, my shaker elements don't stick. And I'm just going around the perimeter of this oval area, and I don't make a ton of shaker cards. There are 42 pieces of, and I've only used a few. I've actually had this for a few months and it does bend. I mean, it, you know, um, and then I can just cut off right here like this, stick that down in there. We are going to Plop down some of this confetti in here. Perfect. And I just, you know, I just want to add a little element of fun. So I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to do a little more. We've got to do some foam tape around this backer here. And this way it will, um, It'll all be the same level when it sits on that um, pretty backing that we made. Now you could certainly use the three inch or the three M foam tape, but I I basically want to prevent any sagging in the card as much as possible. Okay, I think that's good. We'll set that aside over there. All right, so basically we are going to just pull up these little strips and then just being careful that we don't you know, really bump. We don't want the confetti to go everywhere. We want it to stay in the cart. See like that. I just I just talked about not doing that and that's the first thing I do. That is okay. I've got plenty of confetti. Let me know down in the comments what are 
some of your favorite things to give to a brand new mom at a baby shower. I am. Um, I love baby showers. They're so fun. And of course, you know, who doesn't love sweet little babies? Okay, I think I think I got all of the tape off. And I'm not going to worry about those little pieces that popped out. That is definitely on me. And okay. So now I'm literally just going to place this right on top. Like this. I love shaker card. I think, you know, as far as card making goes, I think shaker cards are my favorite. Okay, moment of truth. <gasps> Look! Y'all, look how sweet that is. Okay, I think this is probably the best shaker that I've ever made. And then just putting the anti-static on the acetate, I think is, you know, really helpful. Nothing's really sticking to the acetate, except maybe like where, you know, I might have a piece of glue that's not quite dry, but that is amazing. Okay. So this is my card panel, and I am just going to fold my card panel down. And then we are, my bone folder is like on the other side of the room over there. So I'm not gonna worry about it right now. And in a pinch, you can always use your scraper tool to help with your fold. So now the question is this. This is what the card looks like. And do we just leave it like that and let the color shine through the back? Or do you, you know, I actually think I might leave that. I think there's so much, I was wondering if I needed to have color going around, but I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Where's that other piece? Like, like, I don't know if I need to have, you know, the color behind it. Actually, let's do this. Do we need color behind and blend it out? That actually is kind of interesting. Hmm. Okay, I, I'm thinking that I want to maybe just do around the border part. But this isn't bad either. Like I could just leave it very simplistic. All right, let's do one more little bit of ink blending and it'll go really fast because I'm not doing a whole lot. I'm literally just going to do just some border piecing. So I'm going to bring this back in. Okay. And all right. We'll just, and I'm not even going to go really very dark on it either. I just want to go around the edge like this. Okay, so there's our yellow. That's our mustard seed. And of course, I'm <laughs> realizing my colors are a little in different places, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. 
So this card is actually, well, it is bringing my vision to life. However, um, I'm also doing things on a whim that I hadn't even planned on doing. Look at that. That's actually, that is a really cool technique. You could even do that on the inside. I'm not going to, but you could like, that is really, really a neat technique, right? We're done with that. Man, my desk really looks like, <laughs> it looks like a party. There is so much stuff everywhere. Okay, so now moment of truth. Check it out. Look at that. In fact, let's move this out of the way. Okay, that was totally the right decision. That, that was great. All right, let's do some tape runner. I don't want to put any more liquid glue down. I'll just do a fresh tape runner. I'm such an over adhesor. That's, <laughs> that is probably so unnecessary. But tape runners are so fun. <laughs> oh my, it has been, it has been a day. Not a bad day, it's just definitely been a day. All right, I'm gonna bring in my Misty to help me get this lined up. So I tend to use this when I'm gonna be putting the card together. By the way, don't forget to put some sort of signature or something on the back. I always have my Cricut write something out. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's important to, to have your little, um, little name on the back. I'd like to get a stamp that has like a monogram, but okay. So now, I'm going to stand up to do this because I don't want to mess it up. Let me move some of this stuff. There we go. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get this. What I'm basically doing is I want about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So this Misty has these markings. Okay, I think this is, this is, I think this is almost my favorite card to date. I, I can't imagine another card that's like, oh, guys, that is just so fun. I love it. I wish these were like little beads and they would rattle, but that is awesome. Okay, well, this is our baby shaker card. I, I hope that you are inspired to make something like this on your own. I hope that you learned a couple of things here and there and that, um, that I was able to inspire you a little bit. So, in the meantime, until I see you in the next video, make sure that you um, uh, enjoy yourself a wonderful cup of coffee or whatever iced beverage you like the most as we're going into summer. And happy crafting. I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.